Alright then, let's just jump right into it then, shall we? And we'll look at visual styles. This one's in the course title, mate, visual styles. This one's quite relevant. It's all about how Inventor displays your model to you on screen, how it presents the textures to you on screen. So it's not to be confused with what it's showing you, so it doesn't affect in any way, shape, or form the size of the parts, the which parts are shown and which parts aren't shown. It's got nothing to do with any of that. It doesn't make any tangible difference to the model at all. It's just how it just cosmetically and aesthetically shows your model on screen. Okay, so the visual styles, right? Let's jump into it. So the visual styles, you'll find them on the view tab on the ribbon bar. And regardless of whether you're in an assembly or a part, you'll get the same set of visual styles. It doesn't make any difference. But if you want to follow me, I'm, I'm using the Heli assembly, which is in the data set. Uh, you'll download that from the Pluralsight website or the, my course in the download section. So I'm working in Heli 3. I haven't changed anything here. It's all default. So we've got the view tab and then visual styles is this button here. So this is what this section is all about. So if you select visual styles, it'll give you 11 default visual styles. And I suppose it's it would be nice if you could change them, but in a way it's good that you can't because then it's just Autodesk saying, here's a bunch of visual styles. Use them if you want to. You can't change them. You can't add to them. You can't delete them. They're just there. Toggle them, play with them. Go with what, what you think's best or what suits the job you're doing at that particular point in time. So I'll, I'll go through them all and we'll see what they are. So starting with realistic. Realistic is, obviously, it's the, it's the most realistic one. What realistic does is it turns off the model edges and then it converts your textures to be more realistic. They react with the background differently. If you've got, we'll, we'll look at this in, in the, the next module but if you've got a background that has a photograph in it, which is what's called a, an IBL, image-based lighting background, when you set it to the realistic visual style, your textures will reflect. It enables reflections on the textures and you'll be able to see the background reflecting on the textures. And it just makes everything, it, it's not important to understand what it's doing. It, it's just nice to know that it's, that is the most realistic way to present your information on screen is to set the realistic visual style but you can't have outlines on your models when you've got the realistic visual style set it's just because it, it, it doesn't look realistic does it if you've got outlines on so that's the realistic visual style the next one is shaded so that turns off the realistic visual styles you don't get the the interactions with the background and the scenery and you just you get the the actual correct texture so the colors for the appearances that you've used so steel and metals silver then you've got the, the the perforated metal here uh the glass or plastic textures they're still transparent but um you just don't get the the, the interaction with the backgrounds when you've got it set to just shade it and then the next one is the same texture so you get the same colors you get the same uh, visual feedback with the next visual style except it'll turn on model edges so now you can see the outline for the parts and that's quite useful if you've got quite a visual a visually heavy model you've got maybe quite a lot of clutter inside so if, say for example down here there's quite a lot of clutter so turning on the edges lets you see where parts start and end and where there's fillets and certain edges and yeah with the with edges turned on you do get a an actual outline edge on fillets as well which that's why it doesn't look all that realistic because you can you, obviously in real life you wouldn't see that actual edge on the fillet but it turns them on just so you can differentiate between straight edges flat edges curved edges and fillets and where joints are and that kind of thing so it's, it's useful for seeing uh, all of those edges so that's shaded with edges the next one's shaded with hidden edges this one's quite visually intensive because it turns on model edges and uh, dashed lines for hidden edges so if you've got concealed parts that are inside or contained internal parts then you'll be able to see those via a dashed hidden edge. So it's visually quite intensive on your computer. So this is where you might start to see some stuttering or um, some a, a bit of distortion with orbiting and panning around. But again, as long as you've got a modern-ish computer, you should be fine. But you can see what it's doing there. Anything that's that's concealed from view is shown via a dashed line. And that's obviously updating interactively as you're spinning around and panning around. So it's it's quite a nice one. It's good for, as you're designing, just letting you know where things are. If you're drilling a hole through something and it might clash with a part internally, then you can see that without having to do cross-sections and turning parts on and off. You'll be able to see that with this visual style. So that's, that's a really nice one to use whilst you're designing, as long as it's not too cluttered. And it does get quite cluttered if you do have quite a lot of parts there you can see um, like for example these two uh, cogs here they've got so many edges there it just, just turns into a massive cluster <laughs> of, of lines which uh, can join together and Inventor does quite a good job of, of not making it 
blur everything blend and blur into one solid blob of edges they do they do quite a good job of that so it's it's all right to work with this one if you if you prefer that one so that's that's shaded with hidden edges right the next one is wireframe so wireframe saw the kick back to the olden days where it just turns off all textures turns off all colors all flat faces you can't see anything other than the model edges so that's that's wireframe and because there's no flat faces there's nothing to conceal so there's no dashed edges everything's just a solid edge which um I wouldn't particularly like to, to work in this one, especially with three, you know, with 3D modeling, when you're, you're sketching on faces, you're placing, you know, features on faces. If you can't actually see the face that you want to click on, it's quite a difficult one to work with. So it's nice for just doing maybe clearance checks or if you, if you are drilling a hole through to see if the full extent of the hole without having to navigate dashed lines, perhaps. But yeah, that's wireframe. So that's a sort of a kick back to the old mechanical desktop days where this was one of the, <laughs> the only option to work with so that's uh, that's wireframe right the next one's wireframe with hidden edges so this one is uh, extremely visually intensive so we've got the wireframe solid edges and we've got the hidden edges as well so what this one does is i was saying in the for, for wireframe it doesn't give you any hidden edges because it doesn't recognize flat faces it just turns off the fact that there's a face there with wireframe and hidden edges it calculates the fact that there's a face there so it'll still give you the outline it doesn't show you the texture but when there is a line concealed from what would be concealed from view it'll dash those lines so it's again again it's up to, it's up to you which one you work with there's there's use cases and benefits and disadvantages for each one but you, you tend to pick and choose which one you work with based on what you're doing at the time so that's wireframe with hidden edges right you've got wireframe and visible edges only so this one's it's it's just essentially shaved with edges but with no color that's what this one is uh it, it tries to differentiate the components based on their actual color so you can see the cockpit was like an orange plastic so it's given a couple of the edges there like an orange edge color so it does let you differentiate part from part based on what color it is originally but um yeah that's uh that's wireframe with visible edges only and then we've got monochrome. So monochrome is just pure black and white. Now there's there's no real design advantage of having monochrome really, unless you've actually no, I can't think of any. It's it's nice maybe for for doing an image export if you just want to export a black and white image for a manual. So perhaps you're going to do a print screen of this window and you don't want any colours to be exported. Monochrome is a good way of doing that. So um, yeah, that's monochrome, pure black and white. Then we've got uh, water <laughs> water colour. Straight up, cards on the table. I've got, I've got nothing. <laughs> I've, I've got absolutely nothing for this one. I don't know why it's here. I don't know why it exists and what purpose it serves. It contributes nothing to my life, and I can't imagine it will contribute anything to your life either. But it just makes everything a sort of pastel watercolor type texture. It gives you this sort of um, like a dimpled appearance on the flat faces, and everything sort of fuzzy and just, just no, <laughs> just no. I've got, I've got nothing for that. Sketch illustration. So this makes your, uh, it turns off all the colors and it makes it look like a pen. It tries to make it look like a pencil sketch, but this is, uh, it potentially got a use for exporting images out for, again, for manuals, for brochures, uh, instruction documents, anything like that, where you need to export an image, but you don't want, you don't want it to look like a 3d model. You just want it to look like, uh, like a hand sketch. So it, it makes it simpler for printing and for, for maybe ballooning items uh, you, and you just don't want it to have that 3d look so that's uh, sketch illustration and then you've got technical illustration as well which is uh, it's just a simpler version of shaded with edges but it turns off any fancy appearances it turns off the transparency on glass and plastics and uh, yeah it's just a simpler way of viewing it with uh, with colors so that's all the visual style so each one of them has got its own little niche use its own little niche difference but you won't you won't find yourself using a lot of these visual styles you'll find that you'll like a couple of them and you'll stick with those and unless you've got a specific use case for one or the other you'll just you'll just ignore and avoid a lot of these uh, visual styles so so uh, you know, yeah there, there's the visual style so what i'm going to do next is show you uh, a couple of tips and tricks with them for example why when you set it to for example monochrome and then you shut it down and then open it back up again it goes back to shaded with edges <laughs> why does it do that right well i'll i'll take you through that in the next clip <laughs> 